Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is April 23rd, 2022. Before we get started, this video is for educational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. And I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. Also, if you like these videos, um, please like and subscribe. Um, I really do appreciate that. Also, if you're on Twitter, I'm at AlphaCharts365. I do appreciate any uh, uh, retweets and likes of, of um, when I post on Twitter. It just kind of gets the word out about my videos, and um, and it, it is greatly appreciated. So if you do that for me, I would appreciate it. Okay, let's talk about the market. We have SPX, and we have kind of talked about this potential topping pattern for a very long time. Um, we now are having this kind of waterfall type decline last two days have been absolutely brutal in this market there's no place to hide um and we're gonna chances are very likely that the market will come back and test this 41 50 ish area and that's going to be key so 41 50 ish holds that could be a place where we can then potentially move higher remember head and shoulders are only confirmed with break of the neckline and you know i kind of considered this the neckline because it was the, the the slowest part right here um some people may consider this the neckline i i just don't um in this particular case because we did have the undercut here either way um 4150 is the place that i think needs to hold if it bounces here you know and, and then other things are in place at this at the right time then I think that it could be the start of the next bull run, right? If 4150 holds, if 4150 breaks and price stays below 4150, I think things get much, much, much worse. So this next week, as every week I say this kind of, um, this next week is going to be really, really important because we'll probably know if 4150 is going to hold um, next week. Right. Or at the very least, I think we may get to the point where we're going to test it. And this 4150 level, just so we know, you know, what's going on, it's only about two and a half, three percent lower than where we're at. So it's not that far away. Um, now we could undercut and then rally back up too. So just be aware of that. There's a lot of scenarios going on here, but the momentum and everything now is is, is squarely to the downside. Uh, let's just look at the 200 day. I'll put that in there. And you, you can see 200 day is flattening flat to yeah we'll call it flat right now um but with price underneath it it's never a good thing for a flat 200 day with price underneath it um so there's that so that's spx again a very concerning pattern has not broken or confirmed anything yet and i guess an undercut and a rally back above would be the bullish scenario um a break below and a hold below is the bearish bearish scenario all right but um not not a lot to like there uh let's look at rsp the equal weight so there's your equal weight and um this blue line's not really that valid anymore so you know price kept coming up here failed breakout came down back below the 200 day again and equal weight back to its area of significance about four percent um i think it gets there or gets really close to it if it doesn't get there um and then we'll see what happens at that point but again it has a slightly different look but still you can make the head and shoulders toppy type pattern on the equal weight as well um 200 day prices underneath it and it's fairly flat right now and uh and so again nothing good happens underneath a flat uh 200 day moving average or declining for that matter Cues, cues have been beaten down more than anything else. And last week we talked about the broadening pattern here, right? Um, and the VWAPs from the top and the VWAP from this particular day. And this VWAP from this day actually, which is this purple line right here, was very significant. Price could never get above it. You had a broadening pattern here, you know, bear flag, and then boom, bomb drops out of it. Now, this purple line down here is the VWAP from the COVID low, right? COVID low, let's go all the way back here. All right, so there's your COVID low, there's your VWAP. It held here, and 
31881 is where it's at currently. Um, we'll see what happens when it gets there because it's going to get there most likely. And, um, you know, it's only it's only about one and three quarters percent below it. Uh, big major support, though, is about eight and a half percent lower. Um, and remember, Qs are going to move much faster than the SPX because of the so heavy in technology and, and, and rising interest rates. And, if they, you know, it, it's going to affect Qs more uh, because of the growth companies that they're involved in. Uh, so, yeah, so this looks pretty rough. Again, it's got that head and shoulders-ish looking top, right? So good topping pattern going on there. Uh, now, this 200-day is already starting to decline. <sighs> Man, declining 200-day moving average. We haven't seen one of those in a long time. Um, never anything good. If you notice, it rallied back into it, rallied back into it, the 200-day I'm talking about, and got rejected twice, and... Yeah, not good. This has a very bearish look to it. And, you know, again, I think this 300 level is the level of significance. And we'll see if it comes down and tags it and maybe a break below and then a rally up. That's the bull scenario. You know, a break below, a rally into it and then a roll over. That's the bearish scenario. And we're going to go over some more uh, sentiment and some, some breath studies. And we're going to look at what we're going to look for as it comes into this for either a bounce or potential new rally going up. But uh, cues are, again, with this declining now, 200 day, um, it's, it's, it's very dicey there. And looking at the equal weights, equal weight 200 day has been declining, right? And so basically, the average, the, the, um, the price could not even come up and reach it, which tells you how broad the sell-off is, right? Because, you know, the cues are, are weighted by a lot of the large tech, but the equal weight, they're not. So you see how weak it was by not even coming up here and seeing it, uh, not even trying to test the 200-day. See price already below the COVID uh, VWAP, which is this purple line right there. And, you know, 68-ish dollars or so is the point of contention on the equal weights. And that is only 4% below. A break below that and things get really dicey. I think, you know, could go down to 60. That would be an area of, you know, 60, 61. I might as well draw it in now because there's this scenario that it's gonna get there anyway. Right around there and Let's see how much further that is. And it's about 14, 15% lower. So we break this. There's your next major level of support. Doesn't mean it has to go down there, but looking pretty ugly. Again, we had this head and shoulders top, which broke, confirmed. And now we have the larger head and shoulders top. Again, very common theme in a lot of these um, names. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect head and shoulders. So the head and shoulder police don't need to come after me. But um, but that is a topping pattern, right? And you have a declining 200-day price underneath it. Can't even rally up and touch it. Very bearish look in the queues. Again, as we come into these areas of support, potential support, um, those are where we're going to look for confluence of different factors to see is this the end? Is there gonna maybe even a snapback rally and, and then maybe potential new bull market? Maybe not, but it may be uh, opportunities there, okay? Um, looking at the IWM, and again, we've drawn this in, you know, weeks ago, and um, it's starting to play out five waves, right, into this potential major area support. It was 171-ish, 170, somewhere around there. Um, again, looking at you know, 10, 11, 12%, something like that. Lower, I think the question mark soon can be removed as soon as we break some of these lows. Um, does it have to get all the way down there? I don't think it has to, but I think it, it definitely could and, 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 and potentially will. Again, we've already had this declining 200 day. Um, so that's never a good sign, right? Declining 200 day is never good. And, um, and this is a major area right here. So as price comes into this area, we're going to, again, look for that confluence of potential change in sentiment to overly bearish. And we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. 
Um, but I think that there's a lot of room here for this to fall before we get into potentially a, a, um, a bottoming type action. Uh, so that's where we're at. Again, um, five waves down. You know, I don't always do Elliott wave. I'm always looking for that potential. And I think it has it here. Um, so, so yeah, so this looks very dicey. Looks like there's more downside in the future for this, um, for the IWM. Uh, let's look at IWO. And this is small cap growth. So here is its, its major level of support. And as you can see, we're closer on the IWO. It's kind of led always to the, to the downside, right? We're only at five or 6% away from this level. With IWM, we were about, you know, 11, 12%. So it's going to be interesting to see if IWO bottoms first and rebounds first. Again, a very strong declining 200 day moving average. Um, but yeah, I'm looking, to, I mean, so that's going to be the tell, really, I think is IWO, as far as does this, you know, 219, 220 ish area hold? Or does it break and stay below, you know, just looking at roughly, yeah, we'll call it six or 7%, right? So we'll call it 6%, you know, so it let's see if it hits its 6% target first. And then what does price do at that point? Um, you know, does it? One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is the fifth wave. If you, you know, if you really want to, if I can find the right tool. Where is it? I always mess up where this is. Patterns. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Right. And if there was a divergence down here, that would be, you know, better, you know, something like that. But this is a five wave pattern, in my opinion. Uh, hopefully this is the fifth wave. And then we could create some kind of bottoming pattern and then a move higher. Doesn't mean it's gonna V up. Like this is not kind of what I'm expecting, even though it could happen. Um, you know, it'd be more like this, a, just a choppy mess down here. Um, but we'll see. We will see what happens here. All right, so that's IWO again, maybe leading the market. And let's just look at mid caps. So mid caps, to be honest, has, has really held up better than everything else. Remember, so IWM had this look, and it's already broken down long time ago. Mid caps has a flat 200 day. It keeps interacting with the 200 day. Hasn't quite broken down yet. Um, doesn't mean it's not going to. But the mid caps really have held up the best. Um, I don't think it's going to come and test this area because it's held up so much better than everything else. Really impressive resilience, to be honest with you. Staying in this range, you know, maybe it comes out and tests this 452-ish level. You know, it's about 4% lower. Um, and, and the 200-day is kind of declining now, right? So we got back going for us with price underneath it. And maybe it's, it's a laggard and maybe it's a late bloomer and it's going to come down into this area, this space down here. But so far, it's holding up better. So I do like the mid caps there as far as um, relative strength goes. All right, let's look at the financials. Financials, um, you know, took a beating last week. Um, you know, in, in a rising rate environment, you know, I've heard a lot of people saying, well, why aren't financials doing better? It's because, you know, they're worried about slowdown in the economy. And that, that's the answer, right? And they're showing it in the chart. Right, lower high, lower high, lower high. You know, I, I still think this $34.90, $35, somewhere around there. That's the part that, that probably needs to hold in financials. If that breaks, they're in big trouble. Um, but right now, no strength, no participation of any sort in the financials. Uh, 200 day is flattish. So, again, nothing to write home about. Um, SMH, the semiconductors, super important. Uh, sector, you know, kind of broke down. This is the area 222 that's got a hold 221, somewhere around there, you know, and that's still not around the corner. Let's see what that is. It's about five, six percent. So that's the part that, that holds. I think, again, that's a really good outlook on, on the market because I love SMH to lead, right? Let SMH lead out of here and then the indexes kind of follow. 
that would be, you know, if you see SMH and IWO bottom first and then lead, that would get me much more bullish, at least in the short to medium term. Um, you do have a flat 200 day, um, which will start to turn lower in the next couple of weeks if it stays below here. And I think it's 221, you know, 218, somewhere around there. I think that's a part that has to hold. You may get an undercut, right? That's that would be normal to shake out type of undercut and a rally. And then we'll see what happens, right? We can't predict. We can only kind of follow and see what happens at this point. But SMH right now looking not so good. Looks like there's more downside in its bag. Lumber. So early in the week, lumber was really ripping, which was a very positive sign. Now it's pulled back. Let's see what happens later in the week. Because if lumber breaks out ahead of the market, that'd be a great signal, right? So I want to see what happens next week here, right? Can lumber hold here and then break above, you know, 95-ish, 95, 95 and a half? That would be, again, ahead of the market. You know, this little inverse head and shoulders that it's trying to build out here confirms, and that would be the confirmation. That would be really bullish, right? So lumber, which doesn't always give us a signal, right? And we, and we say that every week, no signals, no signals, no signal. Um, that would be really, really bullish if lumber could do that. So, uh, so that's what we're going to look for. You know, break out above this, we'll call it 95, close above 95. And, um, and that's the bullish scenario, right? There's a 200 day, it's doing, it's above it. Um, and I really think that, uh, that, that there may be a signal coming. There isn't one quite yet. All right, the VIX. VIX is spiking, whoop, whoop. right? So, I think it's got room. I think, uh, you know, getting into this, you know, above 35-ish, you know, even to 40-ish would be um, plausible, probable, but that's where maybe the opportunity comes. If we get a 40 print on the VIX, that could be the contrarian reason to go long, right? No guarantees, right? Because here we got a 40 print, it, you know, things calm down a little bit in the market and then it ripped higher. And I'm not saying we can't do that, but I think that 40 print, you know, 39, 40, somewhere around there, um, that's a place with other things line up to, to maybe start to look at uh, on the contrarian side for some relative strength and, and potential long. So we're not there yet, but look for the VIX if the market continues to be volatile to rip higher. And again, I would love to see it make a, a 40 print, but we'll see. Uh, there's VIX. So that's one thing I'm looking for, right? VIX to make a 40 print. Um, let's see what else. Um, I'm looking at, you know, if you look at bonds, right? Let's, let's, let's flip to bonds. We're not seeing a wholesale like problem in the bond market. Um, it hasn't ripped higher yet, right? Hasn't had anything that really looks like this. This was close. This was close, but it didn't happen, right? It didn't happen. It didn't look like even like this. It didn't happen. So, and it actually reversed right away. Now, the 200 day is kind of flat. It's been, you know, whatever. Uh, so we'll see if the trend is changing and if this is some kind of ready to rip higher. So far, you know, 1.52 seems important. It did rip higher to 1.55 ish. Um, but you know, that's where it held. Now, if it makes a higher high, well, then we'll reevaluate. But right now, this tells me that the bond market is not pricing in a catastrophe, right? And we're looking to the bond market to price in catastrophes. It didn't happen, not yet at least. So right now, I think the, the plausible and more probable idea is that we're going to get one more big flush and then potential bottoming type action. This bond market just kind of, has a range, right? It does not going up, it's not going down, it's just range bound. And, 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 and that's fine too. I think range bound bond uh, ratios is fine because the market will adjust. Um, but the bond market's not freaking out. I'm not freaking out. I got yelled at last week for not showing the 10 year. So here's the 10 year, let's go to weekly. Um, and so the 10 year is right at this trend line right trying to get above it right now i will say it's, it's right there though so let's see what happens early next week you know a spike above and then a, a quick comeback 
maybe what we need as price is going, you know, making, you know, testing support, right? So a spike in the 10 year, and that causes some problems in the market, spike in the VIX, market comes down even 10%. And then it then the ten year kind of chills out. Um, that could be something. We'll see. Again, this is a big pattern, right? This is a big trend line. Um, does it hold here? Does it spike and keep going? Right, that'd be a, a bigger problem, right? Where you know, it's probably going to get to three. You know, um, even maybe even this, you know, somewhere like here, something like that, right? That's the area that I'm in, you know, 3.1, something like that. Comes into this area and then comes back down. That may be what we need. I don't know, but uh, something to watch, right? Um, yeah, so that is a 10 year. Uh, looking at put call ratio. Go back to the daily. That was a weekly chart. All right, so on the daily, you see this marked major bottoms. We're starting to get that fear in the market. We're not quite there yet. Um, so what am I looking for? Right, I'm looking for a spike into this area right here, as we've seen back here with the COVID lows, 8519, that was some lows. You know, this was um, in January 2018. This was, remember, the Powell pivot or whatever you want to call it. This That marked basically a low in the market. Again, never to the day, but pretty close. Again, Important things happen. Doesn't get spiked this too too often. You know, we're going to 2016, 2015, so on. Um, so I'm looking for a spike up in this area, which we haven't been there in two years. Um, that would be the contrarian. Everyone's on one side of the boat, bearish. Again, let's see bonds. You know, TNX maybe break out and then come back. Right, the breakout things are going to be bad. The price coming to support. We get this bearish everyone on one side of the boat we're all going to zero and then maybe that's a part to get long and, and get long heavy um maybe not right <laughs> we never know but as a contrarian it's worked multiple times in the past so that's a, as on a sentiment um point of view that's what i'm looking for right over here so definitely uh let's watch put call ratio early especially early next week if price continues lower into the support areas where is this? My guess would be if it's up here um, above 1.4, you know, in that 1.5 ish area, like that's pretty awesome, right? That, that's what we're looking for. Again, hopefully, you know, we're, we're protecting some of our money and our capital. And as it gets in there, it may be time to deploy some of it. We'll see. But um, that's the sentiment piece that we're looking for. All right, let's look at breath MMFI, which is the 50 day moving average percent of stocks above. We're back down to 33.87. We were really nice and happy up here and above 50%. It's come right back down. I'm looking forward to get maybe down here below 10%. Doesn't mean it has to, but if we get again that that spike to lows and you know, I'm sorry to support, and we get um, a lot of people getting bearish, and we get percent stocks above the 50 day in this below 10%. Um, again, it doesn't happen that often, but when it happens, it happens um, at important junctures, right? And as you can see, the Powell pivot, right? And in 2016, right? 2015, COVID lows, right? Really important areas that marked reversals happened down here in this 10%, you know, and maybe gets to 11 or 12%, right? It doesn't have to get to 10%, but I've noticed that 10% seems to be the important area below 10%. So that means that there could be more pain over the short run. But if it does get down here, that could be setting up for a magnificent looking bottoming. Again, looking for all these different pieces to line up um, and, and give us maybe a, a chance to, to, to create an edge, right? And that's what we're looking for, create edges. When is the market going to be good again? These are things we're looking for. Um, uh, and a good MMTH is below the 200 day. Again, it's at 33%. Again, looking at, you know, 20% for this one, below, you know, uh, above the 200 day moving average. And right now we're at 33. And just looking in the past, you know, we've had, you know, 20% and maybe even 15 could be even a better spot. 
I have it listed at 20, but again, anywhere in this green area. And I think those that could be areas for potential bottoming happen uh, action to happen. And we've seen it multiple times in the past and it could get pretty low, right? It could get pretty darn low. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see how the spikes, if it spikes down and how fast it gets there, right? It can get there really fast, right? Really fast. So uh, let's watch that. MMTH, um, another one I watch. We're getting gold. So if people, if, if things were going to get terrible, I think gold would be ripping and maybe it will rip, but it really hasn't yet. There's maybe some type of bull flag, who knows? Um, but it hasn't yet. Maybe this is a gigantic inverse head and shoulders and gold is the trade of the future. And so we'll see but people aren't piling into it yet. So I'm not crazy worried yet. All right, then we'll look at Bitcoin. Um, it's accidental, there's Bitcoin. No, oh. oh yeah, I forgot to put Bitcoin at the end over here. Going to daily and let's go. So this trend line, you know, and I, I on a closing basis, eek. So we're back down below it on a closing basis. Um, not the best look. Again, I may be able to move this trend line a little bit like here maybe, right? And, and save it. <laughs> That's one nice thing about trend lines. It can always be moved. Um, but this is the range and I'm gonna put both those trend lines in there, right? So this is the range I think that really has to hold right i mean if we get below this thirty nine thousand ish area i think bitcoin gets down to 30 and that may be in the cards in a really quick move like that again it's below the 200 day that's declining um i wouldn't be surprised if you see a quick move down bitcoin into this thirty thousand ish range this next week and then we'll see what happens like like 30,000 is going to be really strong with support. I think you're going to see people come in and defend 30,000 big time in Bitcoin because they know that if they lose 30, it's going to 20. And that's going to be a huge problem because, you know, it was almost 70,000 off the highs. I mean, heck, we're already, you know, down 42%. At the lows, it was down 51. Even if it gets this 30,000, it'll be almost a 60% decline off the highs. And you don't want to get into a 75% or 70% drawdown. In Bitcoin. So anyway, so could it? Yes. I, I but right now I'm looking for Bitcoin potentially to drop to this, you know, thirty thousand range with confluence of. All right. So let's talk about confluence, right? So we're gonna have Bitcoin potentially dropping to this thirty thousand, and then you see, you know, the correlation between that and Nasdaq is, is huge. So again, being the riskiest of risk assets, that's what we'd like to see, right? This kind of lead to the downside and then hold in the area where it's supposed to hold. That'd be great, right? You're gonna see, hopefully, see, you know, a washout in stocks into this, you know, under sub 10% of percent of stocks above the 50-day moving average, right? I didn't do the Dion Geometric Index. I forgot that one this week, but you see this declining. You know, this area, this 600 area, really needs to hold, but maybe you get a quick move. You know, it's only two percent, three percent below. Oof. Um, you know, maybe get a little undercut of the value line geometric index and then a rally up. It, it definitely could do that. Um, good call ratio. You know, we want to see it get above 1.4, you know, more into 1.5 level. You know, what else would we like to see? We'd like to see the VIX spike into this, you know, 40 ish range, right? I would love to see a VIX in the 40. That'd be great. Would love to see lumber kind of hold here and then start to break out as the market's making um, you, these lows or into support, I should say. You know, I want to see, you know, I'd love to see SMH lead to the, to the downside, hold this 219 or slightly undercut 219 and then start to, to rebound ahead of the market, right? When I say the market, I'm talking about the Qs or the SPX, more likely the Qs. Um, you know, I'd like to see IWO lead to the downside and start to stabilize down here and, and, and start to try to make a higher high, right? Um, you know, Qs, 
you know, potential come here, hit this 300 level or undercut 300 and move and start to, to rebound higher, right? So those are all the things I'm going to be looking for. Um, and outside of, of indexes, really, it's, it's going to be the VIX spike to 40. It's going to be put call ratio, get above 1.4 into the 1.5-ish. It's going to be the percent of stocks above the 50-day to be sub 10%. Um, those, th those things start to line up. You know, maybe lumber breaking out ahead of the market. So there's your, your core, you know, what you're looking for as far as intermarket analysis, um, things that could potentially be signs of a bottom. The short term, I think there's going to be much more pain ahead. And I think that chances are it's going to be, to be swift and severe um, because that's how you get that change in sentiment. That's how you get a put call ratio above 1.4 is swift and severe. So, um, so watch out for that. I hope you guys stay safe. Um, lots of, of landmines out there and, um, and just be careful this week and you know maybe a week or two you know coming into the end of april and i'm sure that i'm sure there's a fed meeting or minutes or something being read this week um you feel like there's always a fed something or another being read i don't follow that kind of thing but maybe that will jolt the markets maybe somebody will make a speech and jolt the markets something's gonna happen and you're gonna see the play out into this 300 ish area again and if it's quick and severe that's kind of what we're hoping for and then maybe we can start to talk bottoming action next week. That's what we can hope for. We'll see. Hope you all have a great week. Take care and uh, stay safe out there.